maybe a quick introduction round first. Anthony, if you start from there. Hello, I represent Interflow Healthcare, which is part of the Interflow Group. We've been working in Pakistan now the last seven years across the pharmaceutical sector as well as the clinical healthcare space, uh, providing services and solutions and ideas uh, to the diagnostic laboratories, hospitals, and again, pharma companies throughout Pakistan and abroad. Good morning, everyone. Uh, Tabassum Bali. Uh, I'm a brand and consulting, uh, branding and consulting person. A background uh, company is New Leaf, and background is post advertising, operations, and strategy. Uh, been in the industry for 30 plus years uh, with advertising and uh, banking operations. Uh, it's good to be here, and lovely to see people uh, working both Finis and the Pakistani side of companies together. Hi, my name is Amin Ramal. Uh, I'm a director in Asiatic Public Relations, which is a PR and communications company. And I'm also a, a technopreneur. I've invested in uh, technology companies uh, uh, in sports tech, fintech, um, and uh, currently looking into uh, agri tech, clean tech, and uh, health tech. Hi, hello. My name is uh, Ziad Bashir. Um, I'm a director at Gulamath Holdings which is uh, right now currently into textiles mainly. We're also into retail, into e-commerce. And um, like Ali said, Wartzilla, we were the first IPP in Pakistan back in 1994 that did the deal with Wartzilla and started that relationship. Thank you. Okay, good. So, so every time we talk about the Pakistani export, let's start with that angle. The Pakistani export to Finland or anywhere else, uh, the, the question is that, that how we can actually increase the value of export. We, I think that we're still exporting too much products from Pakistan with, with, with no added value or too low value. So your, what is your first impression if I said, okay, how we can increase the, the value of products going out from, from Pakistan abroad? Ziad, you can start. Well, um, the thing is that I think um, First of all, the product which is going out is mainly basic bedding and apparel. So, you know, we export normally, I mean, personally not to Finland, but let's say to be at IKEA, where the largest supplier is globally to IKEA in the world, as Gulam and Textiles. We also supply to, you know, other groups which are Inditex in Spain and so on and so forth. But it's all basic apparel and textiles. So I think what we need to do is, you know, focus on maybe a lot of technology transfer, see how we can get stuff, technical textiles from there, you know, different specialized finishes, maybe, you know, nowadays there's a lot, lot of different medical textiles which has come out, even technology merged with textiles is coming out. So we need to start moving in that direction to get technology transfer. We also need innovation happening from Pakistan. And innovation right now in Pakistan is really, I think, um, non-existent nearly, as I would say. And I think there's a lot of maybe cultural reasons and traditional reasons behind why innovation doesn't exist in Pakistan. From when we are very young in school, we're not really encouraged to ask any questions. And I think that's something we can learn from Scandinavian countries, that, you know, in Scandinavia, the schooling system is extremely different. So maybe if we can get some of that schooling system or ideology back here, because in Pakistan, you're really forced to kind of memorize stuff at school at a very young age, and you're not, you're not kind of um, told to think aloud or ask questions or anything else. And apart from that, also, failure is really looked down upon culturally over here. So if you fail in any area, you're kind of really looked down and frowned down upon. So people really don't take any risks or do anything which would, you know, help them innovate. So they stop that innovation at a very young age, and you just start doing what you're supposed to be doing or how you fit into the system. So I think we need to look at all these areas and kind of see how we can work together and move forward. Um, I think one of the key things you had mentioned was innovation, and I think that's an area where we can learn from Finland to create value added, um, to, to create value addition in whatever services and products we are uh, uh, we're exporting. Um, and a lot of that is understanding the, how we can collaborate as, uh, as much as we can export. We also need to understand how can we learn from uh, Finland in terms of what's driven innovation, um, not just 
uh, not just the R&D side, but also understanding how, uh, what's, what were the policies and governance that allowed innovation to foster in, in, in Finland. So, I mean, I think Finland has, spends 4% GDP on, uh, on R&D, and I think uh, two-thirds are from the private sector. So it'll be interesting to see how is that, uh, how, how, what's the process of creating that environment where innovation uh, thrives and where people are willing to invest money in, in R&D. Um, and going back to the export side, I think, if I understand correctly, and the conversations really we've had is, Finland is more, Finnish businesses are focused more on quality, right? And, and we tend to look at things from a price perspective. So having that, um, improving our quality in whatever we're exporting and understanding what's the benchmark of quality that's required uh, versus looking at, our, looking at our exports as just being uh, low price. I think that's another way of, um, of, of increasing our exports. You know, uh, from what Amin mentioned, uh, quality, and after quality is consistency. So I think, uh, a lot of companies, what they fail to do is the first round uh, that they export is good quality, uh, post which they aren't able to maintain that quality. And that's that's very important, uh, consistently delivering on the same quality and the benchmark that has been created. Um, that helps uh, the customers of, and the consumers actually look for that product again and again. Uh, another reason that I think we not another reason, but I think something that we really need to uh, look at is value add. Um, a small example, uh, pink salt, you know, it's a very basic product. However, globally, you will find pink salt uh, priced at different levels. And that's because you have created something that the consumer actually wants to buy and add value uh, by either making it easy for him to dispense it or the quality is good. So I think that, that's very important, uh, branding it. Uh, another example is uh, Basmati rice. Uh, you will get Basmati rice across the uh, globe. Uh, how are we actually exporting it uh, in terms of the finishing of that product, the branding of that product? Uh, that's where we will get the edge, and that's very key. So very consistent with everyone on the panel, there's a lot of great resources here in Pakistan and with the current economic climate, uh, there is a fresh appetite to partner and joint venture. Uh, as Mr. Jamil pointed out, uh, Pakistan is a great secret and most of the successful companies keep their success to themselves. But there's a number of uh, medical device companies here in Pakistan uh, that are doing a lot of work for OEMs like Procter & Gamble and a number of these big names. Uh, and I think that there's a great opportunity uh, leveraging the know-how, the R&D that comes from Finland uh, to partner with local companies here in Pakistan to do the production work, uh, get it to the standard that it needs to be. Uh, as Ziad had pointed out, risk is something that most Pakistani companies don't want to go down that route of. But with cash injections from Finnish partners, uh, that can alleviate a number of that that, that risk aversion, and then bring the medical device uh, and medical products to a much better standard. And then the sales and marketing is where the Finnish uh, partner can come back in and sell those products globally and really have a positive impact on, on both, uh, 